the Buddha speaks of the transient, the creator of consciousness, as being the fundamental truth of religion. And the whole work of completing life and human nature in our Taoism lies in the expression to bring about emptiness. All three religions agree in the one proposition, the finding of the spiritual elixir in order to pass from death to life. In what does this spiritual elixir consist? It means forever dwelling in purposelessness. The deepest secret of the bath that is to be found in our teaching is thus confined to the work of making the heart empty. Therewith the matter is settled. What I've revealed here in a word is the fruit of a decade of effort. Now, you can go back and review that bottom line of uh, 95. It says, is this not a movement without purpose? Action through non-action has this meaning. Dwelling in purposelessness. Now, uh, I'd like to suggest some alternative words. and One might be uh, desirelessness. Because uh, later on, with respect to purpose, as I've shared with you in the evening lecture, it says the right intention must be the master. That's paragraph 107. The right intention must be the master. So it is not saying purposelessness in the sense of not having an ideal or not working with the right intention. But it is putting aside the lower self, not my will but thine is seeking first the kingdom. It's like Jesus said, I don't do anything of myself. I do only what I see the Father doing. It's non-attachment, in a sense. The Gita says that true sannyasin takes no thought of the fruit of his action. He's not concerned with the outcome. You do what has to be done. You don't have a requirement of the way it's going to look. You don't tell God what it's going to look like when it's finished. And that's also related to this uh, mark of the beast insofar as it is not that we do what morality or the law or the contract requires we do what the spirit requires there's of course you measure what the spirit requires by the ideal you've set it has to measure up but it's it's to be guided by the living spirit and not to be conformed to the law a, a limited law St. John of the Cross in the dark night of the soul said um, you know a lot of people think the dark night of the soul is simply going through a difficult situation no what he says it is he says the problem is desire the worst kind of desire is spiritual desire you have to put aside even the desire for spiritual experiences you have to put aside the desire for those delectable sweet things of, of the spirit there you, you go about this without requiring that the outcome be that you have a white light experience or that you have a good meditation uh, or all of those things that you're, you start having dramatic dreams. You've got to put all that aside. To the threefold Buddhist contemplation, of emptiness, delusion, and the center. Emptiness comes as the first of the three contemplations. All things are looked upon as empty. Then follows delusion. Although it is known that they are empty, things are not destroyed. But one attends to one's affairs in the midst of the emptiness. But though one does not destroy things, neither does one pay attention to them. This is the contemplation of the center. While practicing contemplation of the empty, one also knows that one cannot destroy the ten thousand things, and still one does not notice them. In this way, the three contemplations fall together. But, after all, strength is in envisioning the empty. Therefore, when one practices contemplation of emptiness, emptiness is certainly empty. But delusion is empty too, and the center is empty. It needs a great strength to practice contemplation of delusion. 
Zen delusion is really delusion, but emptiness is also delusion. And the center is delusion too. Being on the way of the center, one also creates images of the emptiness. They are not called empty, but are called central. One practices also contemplation of delusion, but one does not call it delusion, one calls it central. As to what has to do with the center, more need not be said. <laughs> Elaine is going to interpret all of this for us. Uh, it all is very simple in this next paragraph. <laughs> Listen. This section, and this is the explanation of the above, this section mentions first Lu Ching's magical spell for the far journey. This magical spell states that the secret wonder of the way is how something develops out of nothing. In that spirit and energy unite in crystallized form. There appears in the course of time, in the midst of the emptiness of nothing, a point of true fire. During this time, the more quiet the spirit becomes, the brighter is the fire. The brightness of the fire is compared with the sun's heat in the sixth month because the blazing fire causes the water of the abysmal to vaporize. The steam is heated, and when it has passed the boiling point, it mounts upward like flying snow. He says, going back and dealing with all of the, the paragraphs of that point. It is meant by this that one may see snow fly in the six months. But because the water is vaporized by the fire, the true energy is awakened. Yet when the dark is at rest, the light begins to move. It is like the state of midnight. Therefore, adepts call this time the time of the living midnight. At this time, one works at the energy with the purpose of making it flow backwards and rise and flow down to fall like the upward spinning of the sun wheel. Therefore, it is said, at the third watch, the sun's disk sends out blinding rays. The rotation method makes use of breathing to blow on the fire the gates of life. In this way, one succeeds in bringing the true energy to its original place. Therefore, it is said that the wind blows in the water out of the single energy of the former heaven that develops the out and ingoing breath of later heaven and its inflaming energy. I'm sure you are very clear now on that whole point. <laughs> Oh, at the third watch, the sun's disk sends out blinding rays. Well, we're back to that poem, of course. I don't know. See, the sixth month, at the third, at the third watch, the sun's disk sends out blinding rays. That's the third line of the poem there. Now... Page 58, the bottom, that's paragraph 96. It says simply, and it looks like an equation, the third watch is the abysmal. <coughs> the third watch is the abysmal. It's going down into the... Another reason you're drawing these trigrams may be a little confusing is because you put the North Pole up. Your Chinese would put it at the bottom. All right, those of you who wanted a copy of these correlations. Now... You have some comments on that, Yulan? No, I don't. <laughs> it mentions gates to blow on the fire of the gates of life. Remember, the Leiden is an open or closed door. The pineal is an open door. These are the gates. Then it mentions the true energy to its original place. Remember in the Revelation it says... Um, the fault of the first church, that would be the gonads, that it has left its first love. And it's called to return to the first love. That that energy needs to be related to the manifestation of the love of God. Now, what's the virtue of the first church? Patience. What do the readings say in a search for God about patience? Patience is an active force. You don't have patience just by grinning and bearing it. You have patience by raising this active force, mobilizing by the desire to return to the first love. 
Can so? you of course, in patience possess you your soul. In patience great. possess you your soul. That is, soul. if you raise the energy. You, you discover the soul. Because the Leiden and the pineal are the seat of the soul. It's in patience of using that active energy, raising it up. The way leads from the sacrum upward in a backward flowing way to the summit of the creative and on through the house of the creative. Then it sinks through the two stories in a direct downward flowing way into the solar plexus and warms it. Therefore it is said, wandering in heaven, one eats the spirit energy of the receptive. Remember, heaven refers to the pituitary, the receptive is the fully yang aspect we're associating with the gonads. Now that, that's where I got that comment that I made to you in the break, that when we were discussing those two activities, it sinks down into that. That translates into action at this point. We can begin, our motives become, begin to uh, move in the right direction. We're capable of expressing what we theorize about, putting into action, uh, because it's the action center there. It's that movement from attaining the master to doing what the master says, obeying him. Obeying the laws of the master. If you love me, keep my commandments, the business of Jesus speaking. Because the true energy goes back into the empty place in time, energy and form become rich and full, body and heart become glad and cheerful. If, by the practice of turning of the wheel of the doctrine, this cannot be achieved, how otherwise should one be able to enter upon this far journey? What it amounts to is this. The crystallized spirit radiates back to the spirit fire and by means of the greatest quiet fans the fire in the midst of the water which is in the middle of the empty cave. Therefore it is said and the still deeper secret of the secret the land that is nowhere that is the true home. The fire in the midst of the water is Li in the abysmal that's the pineal response to the Leiden. Uh, Yulin, the first day or two, gave you a beautiful story of what happens at puberty. He says the pituitary secretes a hormone, it touches a center, that secretes a hormone, goes back to the pituitary, then it secretes another. We, you need to get a sense of the interplay of, and the movement back and forth. Now, I think someone who would see auras would see it a living, pulsing, beautiful flow. The physiologist would see the sort of sequence of one center being stimulated, releasing a hormone that in turn releases another. And these are hormonal potentials that ordinarily are not awakened. You can live through a whole life and not have that sequence happen, just as you can live through a whole life and not get pregnant and have that sequence happen. You know, it's fabulous here when you think about Educase's suggestions of the interpretation. What we are listening to here are descriptions of hormonal action. Uh, symbolized in the Chinese approach to it, the action of these spiritual centers of the body. Now, in the meditation material, you see the case of material focusing on and relating the meditation to these centers, to the, uh, we call them chakra in the finer body or the endocrine centers in the flesh body. Now, the same thing he interpreted. When you study and read that revelation, he interpreted the revelation straight through in a particular opening parts of it up to about the 11th chapter the hormonal action what was taking place in as each of these seven seals were open remember was it yeah, seals the opening of each one and what took place at each at each level again you've got a symbolic description uh, of a action of movement of the energies that are actually going on in the body I think so frequently we get lost in in just the nice warm feelings and the experiences and things of that kind and do not realize how much our whole being is affected by the meditation process uh, because these endocrines control not only the, the emotional and the memory, deeper karmic memory patterns, but they control every function of the physical body. Every single one of them are controlled in one place or another through these seven these centers of the body. And we are seeing uh, symbolic language here, from uh, with a specific reference from the readings, but the uh, uh, both the revelation and the uh, secret of the golden flower describing these changes that are taking place in our in our bodies, in the actual structure, 
uh, both of the flesh and the finer body. And then the creation of this gradual creation of this other body that we're going to have to purify if we're going to not get caught. The land that is nowhere is the true home. Remember, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again, that where I am, there you may be also. But then when they ask about it, he says, you can't come there now. You're, we don't have a, a body to survive in that atmosphere. It's like you couldn't live on the moon. You don't have a body that can survive there without taking an artificial environment with you. We just don't have that yet. But that's a consciousness at a different level. I think Edgar Cayce um, sojourned there with some regularity. He just went to experience in another dimension. The pupil has already penetrated in his work into mysterious territory. But if he does not know the method of melting, it is to be feared that the elixir of life will hardly be produced. Now, back up to that expression just three lines into the earlier paragraph fan the fire in the midst of the water and remember the lead in the water region is important so there's something there that has to be melted apparently so that it can rise up if you don't know the method of melting it's to be a fear that the elixir of life will hardly be produced therefore the master has revealed a secret strictly guarded by the former holy man when the pupil keeps the crystallized spirit fixed within the cave of energy and at the same time lets greatest quietness hold sway, then out of the obscure darkness a something develops from the nothingness. That is the golden flower of the Great One appears. At this time the conscious light is differentiated from the light of human nature. Remember at the moment of birth Life and human nature are separated and they never see each other again unless the utmost silence is attained. Now, human nature, seeing, is the higher. That's associated with the pineal. Therefore, remember, we are to take in hand the work on human nature. That's the job. Therefore, it is said, to move when stimulated by external things leads to its going directly outward and creating a man that is the conscious light if at the same time the true energy has been sufficiently collected the pupil does not let it flow directly outward but makes it flow backward that's the light of life the method of the turning of the water wheel must be applied if one continues to turn the true energy returns to the roots drop by drop then the water wheel stops the body is clean the energy is fresh. One single turning means one heavenly cycle, what Master Chu has called a small heavenly cycle. Uh, in paragraph uh, 107, we're told about another kind of cycle. All right. If one does not wait to use the energy until it has been collected sufficiently, it is then too tender and weak, and the elixir is not formed. If the energy is there and not used, then it becomes too old and rigid. And then, too, the elixir of life will hardly be produced. <laughs> you want to read the rest of that? Helen, that's a long paragraph. It is. When it is neither too old nor too tender, then is the right time to use it purposefully. This is what the Buddha means when he says the phenomenon flows into emptiness. This is the sublimation of the seed into energy. If the pupil does not understand this principle and lets the energy flow out directly, then the energies, energy changes into seed. This is what is meant when it is said emptiness follows, finally flows into phenomena. But every man who unites body with a woman feels pleasure first, then bitterness. When the seed has flowed out, the body is tired and the spirit weary. It is quite different when the adept let spirit and energy unite. That brings first purity and then freshness. When the seed is transformed, the body is healthy and free. There is a tradition that the old master Peng, Peng grew to be 800 years old because he made use of serving maids to nourish his life. But that is a mis misunderstanding. <laughs> In reality, he used the method of sublimation of the spirit and energy. 
In the elixir of life, symbols are used for the most part, and in them the fire of the clinging, Li, is frequently compared to the bride and the water of the abyss to the boy. From this arose the misunderstanding about Master Peng, having restored his virility through women. These are errors that have forced their way in later. It takes time off to exonerate one of the masters. Yeah. <laughs> but adepts can use the means of overthrowing the abysmal and the clinging only when they have sincere intention in the work. Otherwise, a pure mixture cannot be produced. I wonder about that word overthrowing. It may not be used in exactly the same sense we ordinarily approach it. The true purpose is subject to the earth. The color of the earth is yellow. Therefore, in books on the elixir of life, it is symbolized by the yellow germ. When the abysmal and the clinging unite, the golden flower appears. The golden color is white. And therefore, white snow is used as a symbol. But worldly people who do not understand the secret words of the book of the elixir of life has misunderstood the yellow and white there in that they have taken it as a means of making gold out of stones. Is not that foolish? And the alchemy is probably symbolic in its essence and not. It got converted into and changed over like Master Ping's legend there. Misunderstood. Some asked Gagakesi about it, what color to meditate upon, and he always told them the white light of the Christ. <laughs>